All right, now with that in mind, let's read this question. I want everyone uh, to take one minute. Everyone take, uh, take two minutes. Read it yourself and we'll talk about it. Go ahead, do that now. Okay, now that we, you've read it over, let's discuss it. It's not a bad question. I don't know where, the, I can't, can't, couldn't find exactly which test this came from. Um, it's either from uh, the, uh, the 190 test or the, uh, the RECA exams, but the older ones, so this could be for the older 190 or the RECA, was not able to locate the actual uh, test. But this is a good question out there. It's been out there for a while. Uh, let me read it to you. It says here, which of the following strategies would be most effective in promoting a first grade student's reading fluency? Now, um, let's circle first grade. They're a beginner reader, right? And so we're looking at building a beginner reader's fluency of decoding a text with speed, accuracy, and expression, but it's not going to be a hard text. It's going to be a more of a basic text, right? It says here, uh, should we A, provide the student with scaffolding, uh, scaffolded practice in reading comprehension strategies? Well, what we're trying to do is build fluency. That's the big idea. So it's not comprehension strategies. So let's cross that out. How about this one right here? Create frequent, uh, how about this one? Provide the student with focused review of phonics generalizations and uh, word analysis strategies. So what's that referencing? Phonics generalization is referencing phonics patterns. So we'd go through, you know, diagraphs and diphthongs and vowel, uh, vowel, um, vowel uh, diagraphs, right? So, so th that is a phonics thing. And we're not working on phonics here. We're working on fluency, building their speed, accuracy, and expression. And it's not word analysis. What's word analysis? Look at all the great vocab here. Word analysis is when we take a word and we uh, we look at its morphemes. Usually it's a multimorphemic word or a word like, you know, I'll give you a basic one, like replay. It's a word where we analyze the morphemes of the parts of the word that carry meaning, like the prefix and the base, root, or suffix. So we're really not doing that in first grade. So we wouldn't really be, do, because they're a beginner reader, we're not going to be doing, we're working with complex multi-syllable words or multi-morphemic words. So that's out. So now uh, it's down to B and D. Take a moment, read those over again. Read over B and D again. Read them over. Let me clear these off. Pretend like these aren't even here. To erase them, narrow down our options. Just for a moment. So imagine we only had two. Now, if you can get on the day of the test, if you can get to the point where you can cross out at least two of the options, right? You're all, that's a really good place to be. Now you have to figure out, you know, how to get that last one, but you always want to at least eliminate at least two of the options if you can. Okay, so we're once again, we're working with fluency. That's our goal. Let me circle the target. And we're trying to help that beginner reader, promote that big beginner reader's fluency. They both start off the same, create frequent opportunities, create frequent opportunities for the student, for the student to engage, to engage. It sounds great. I mean, this is a wonderful, it's whatever it is, it sounds great. Create frequent opportunities for the student to engage. Now this is where they diverge. In silent reading or in oral reading. So if we're trying to build fluency for that beginner reader, silent reading activities for a first grader, we, there's no way of knowing if that first grader is reading the text or not. And if they're in, so if you choose to do activities with silent reading for first grade, uh, there's all, it's always important to give opportunities for students to read independently. But with, with first grade, um, you're not going to be able to tell what's going on exactly. You won't be able to tell if they're building fluency or not. Uh, but with oral fluency, oral reading, you will, because you'll definitely get a gauge and that student will be practicing pronouncing the words with the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. The oral reading element uh, literally builds reading fluency and oral reading fluency. And then here's the second hint that it's uh, D, high interest reading text and independent level text. So there's a difference here in these two types of text. Um, 
A uh, high interest uh, text is a text usually, usually it's a text that it, it's obviously of high interest to a student. And usually that high interest level offsets, um, sometimes offsets uh, the complexity uh, of the text, meaning the student sometimes is so interested and motivated to read the text that they're going to be motivated to, to work through any difficulties they have at, in the decoding process. That's one way of looking at a high interest text. Another way of looking at it is like an informational text that is really interesting, like on, um, um, they used to have like uh, like Nat Geo or, or, or uh, some type of a, a Sports Illustrated, you know, like uh, a magazine for kids where they'd go through uh, games. So, so this would be something that, uh, and usually the texts are, are, are structured in a certain way that they're very accessible. But again, this would be a text that's not based on the student's independent reading level. It's based on their interest. And it, it would be trying to encourage them to read because they're motivated to read that topic. So based on research, we're going to shy away from this if we're trying to foster fluency and, be, and try and figure out where they are independently and get a text where they're at that 95% level. All right, now team, this question is over 10 years old. All right, so I'm sure you can find problems and case studies where some of this stuff is tweaked. But, but this is the general gist. We're trying to build fluency for a beginner reader. So that means we're not going to be doing uh, comprehension. We're not going to be doing phonics um, um, necessarily or word analysis. We want to make sure that they have a text that's at their independent reading level. And we want to see that they can practice reading that text at an independent reading level out loud. So whenever we do oral reading activities, that's always an activity involving fluency. Okay. All right, team. The answer here is D. Good question, and uh, look at all the look at all the vocab that you get to review here. All these different ideas, high interest text. There's other ideas there too, and the answer is D. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to locate that test, but that's a good one. So check it out. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. <laughs> 